Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luke and in today's video, I would like to show you one of our new implementations. So we did add a new trigger to motion page recently, which is the observer. Now the observer is very convenient because you can track many events across many devices such as on scroll, on hover, on press, uh, many many different events like that. So I'm going to show you some quick examples and how you can implement uh, the observer trigger into your projects. Now I will just say with the observer trigger we have also added our very own custom made presentation mode. Now what this is basically is if you imagine something like full page JS Yes, where basically you can scroll uh, with one notch and the whole section will change. I'm going to show you this first because this is one of our biggest new features with the Observer plugin. And like I said, it is completely custom built by the motion page team. And the nice thing about this as well is it's super simple to set up uh, as you will see. So let's get right into this. So I've just made a blank page here called Observer Presentation Mode and I'm going to edit this with bricks. All right, so all we need for this is a section and three containers. But before that, I am just going to add a class to my container because we will use this class in motion page. So I'm just going to call this P for presentation hyphen C. So presentation container. I'm just going to make sure my section has uh, no padding here because I want my containers to span the full width and height of its parent section. All right, so on this class, what I'm going to do is make it 100% uh, wide. The height is also going to be 100%. So then on the wrapper, once again, I can just make this uh, 100 viewport height, like so. Uh, that will be on the height here. And then I'm also just going to add a little bit of padding to my actual container, just in case I want to add some content in here. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this three times. And what I need to do next is set them to position absolute. So on the section, once again, let's go back here. It would be relative because the uh, containers inside are going to be position absolute. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find some nice backgrounds for each container. All right, so I've just added the backgrounds here to each container. As you can see in the left panel here, they have different images. So that is basically the setup, very simple. So we have just a parent wrapper. We don't really need to add a class to this, uh, at least not for motion page, uh, but the containers inside. So these will serve as our screens. And I've just added one single class, as you can see, P hyphen C. And then on the ID, I just added the different backgrounds and that is it. So let me save this. And now let me show you the magic in the presentation mode. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead here, create a new timeline, and I'm going to call this presentation mode. I'm going to target our newly created page here. All right, before I continue, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of this uh, header because typically if you have this kind of feature, this would be set to an overlay. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to get rid of this header, uh, but I will enable it back in a second. All right, so I've just turned my header into a single template just so it doesn't show here. All right, so what we need to do first is select our new trigger here, Observer. And in order to access the presentation mode, we will need to make sure that trigger each iteration individually is toggled on. And then you will see here now a new toggle presentation mode. So full page sections, I want to toggle this on. And here we have an optional toggle, which is an infinite repeat, so a loop through. So if you keep scrolling down, it's just going to loop infinitely through all of the sections. So for this purpose, uh, I will toggle this on just to show you. Now our target selector, this is basically uh, where we want the observer to observe, essentially. Now you could leave it as window if this is your only content. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to target our class that we created because it does take up the full content here. So that was PC, as you can see. So we'll do P hyphen C. So that's going to check if our interaction is happening on this class. So because I'm using a mouse, uh, what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to select wheel instead of pointer. So we'll go to wheel and then here presentation mode. So we have these options now direction vertical means it will transition vertically. Uh, we also have an option for horizontal as well, which I will show you. Uh, but in the meantime, what I'm going to do is just come down here just to uh, make sure we have something animating. So I'm going to do PC once again. And now you can see uh, something changed there. So now I'm going to scroll 
and as you can see we have this beautiful effect which is looping infinitely now in order to get this horizontal it's a very simple case of just choosing it from here we will need to make sure that trigger on vertical scroll is selected now if you're using a trackpad for example now naturally your fingers will go horizontally so it will work by default but if you're using a mouse like me then we will need to make sure that this option is checked and now it will work on vertical scroll okay super nice now here we have some more toggles tolerance 10 wheel speed one we also have transition duration so we can make it much slower for example three seconds now when i toggle down one notch it will take a total of three seconds you'll also notice when the slide goes to the left it fades out and that's because the opacity here is checked now i can just remove that and now it will always stay in view Another one, translate, that is the effect that you're seeing. The swipe left, if I get rid of that, it will be an instant change. So as you can see, it's completely instant now, instantaneous. So I do like to keep on translate personal preference and uh, vert vertical. Let's change this back to one second because three is quite slow. Now, I would like to show you one more thing here. So back in bricks, I'm going to add basically a, a title in the middle and I'm just going to do that very quickly here. Okay guys, so all I've done here is I've just added a heading to each container. I've given it a class of PC title and uh, yeah, so this one you can't see it but it says slide one, this is slide two and this one as you can see slide three. I'm just giving it a little bit of styling on the class as well. So I've saved that already and uh, let's go back to motion page, refresh. So now what we can do is we can actually animate uh, elements inside of the presentation mode. So instead of PC, what I'm going to do is edit this and change it to title. And I'm going to animate this from an opacity of zero. And let's make it fade in. So now, as you can see, when I slide down, this fades in. Now I can move this forward. Now maybe that's a little bit too much. So slide one, slide two, slide three, you can see those sliding in quite nicely. And here is the front end. Slide one, slide two, slide three. So you could have any elements in here, animate them as you please. And this was a very popular request. So once again, like I said before, this is completely custom built uh, by the motion page team and we hope you like the presentation mode. All right, so next I do want to show you the other features of Observer, the main features. Uh, so what I've done here is I've just created a very simple section. Uh, I have a title here, Observer. Uh, I have two columns here, a grid. So uh, you can see I have a grid with two columns, my left and my right. And then inside the left, I have an image wrapper. This is set to overflow hidden. And then this image wrapper has a background image and then it has an image element sitting on top if i hide this you'll see that we have this one underneath so with the observer trigger what i want to do is perhaps i want to hover over this button here and i want to reveal this image i could also do it on click uh, or anything like that so let's have a play i'm going to put this back here save this one and let's open up motion page once again all right so let's click on create new timeline i'm going to call this observer examples and this is the page so what i'm going to do here is once again go to trigger and let's go to observer so first let's create uh, an on click event so if i press this button let's reveal the image underneath okay so what i want to do is i want to target this one and as you can see i've given this a class of reveal button pointer is correct now i can choose a callback now as you can see we have many callbacks in this particular example we can do on press which is simulating a click and if I press this, then we want to play an animation. The animation comes from here. So what do I want to happen? Well, I want this image, observer image, to translate up. So from to translate on the y-axis, we'll do minus 100%. So now, as you can see, when I click on this button, we get this nice effect. 
Now, of course, we do have the click trigger itself, but the nice thing about Observer is it comes with so many different callbacks and different device interaction types. So it's just a very convenient trigger to have. I don't really like this effect. Perhaps what we could do is do play reverse. All right, so this is kind of like a toggle. So now, as you can see, I click it once, and then when I click it a second time, basically reverses. Now, obviously, uh, on press is a click. Uh, let's do, for example, now a hover. So on hover, you can see now I'm just hovering over it. Uh, once again, we get this effect. We also have uh, on hover end. So you can add multiple callbacks, as you can see. So now we can do on hover play. On hover end, we can choose now to reverse it. So once I hover over it like this and then come off, you can see we have this nice effect once again. Now you can see what I've done with the images. You could also do the same with this button. So for example, if I hover over this button, you could make the button itself disappear with opacity or translate like we did with the image. And then you could display a button underneath, which says, for example, hide. And then you could add some triggers to that as well. All right, so I will show you one more quick example, which could be a real use case. This has been another very popular request in the past, where if you scroll down the page, your header or navigation will hide and then and if you scroll up on the page, it comes back down. Now, I would say that the observer trigger is absolutely perfect for this uh, scenario. So let me show you how I would go about achieving such a result. All right, so for the header example, I am gonna create a new timeline. I'm gonna make this separate from everything else. Uh, once again, let's go ahead and select our observer. I'm gonna call this header hide. All right, so in this case, let's think about this logically. Where do we want this to happen? We want it to happen uh, if we scroll absolutely anywhere on the page. So as you can see here, by default, is the window so I'm gonna leave this by default because I want this to happen uh, anywhere basically now this is going to be once again in my case uh, wheel you might also want to do scroll uh, the callback is going to be on down so when I scroll down I want to play an animation so what animation do I want to play I want to select our header which is header like so. And as I scroll down, I want it to translate to minus 100% of itself. So as you can see, when I scroll down, I'm not sure if you saw that because, oh yeah, you can see it when I do like this, you can see the header is going up, which is exactly what I want. And then when I scroll up, I want it to basically reverse. Okay, so it did come back down there. Now I would need to make a quick edit to my header just to make it sticky. So I'm gonna do that in Bricks right now. All right guys, so after a little bit of tweaking, what I've done is uh, in this code block here, I'm just targeting the header element. I'm doing position sticky and top zero. Uh, that just makes it sticky at the top. So if I scroll down the page, it will always remain. And then in motion page, what I'm doing is I've decided to target instead of the class header, uh, I'm targeting the header element itself. And then I'm doing translate minus 100. So as I scroll down, you can see it going up like that. Now you're seeing this space here because typically this would also be set to be an overlay, but in this case it is not. But as I scroll down, and then scroll up, it comes back into view as you can see. So uh, what I'm gonna do once again, you can see every time I scroll down, it comes back into effect like so. So what I've found here is if we use on down play next, now you can see it goes up. And then if I toggle down again, it's not playing it again. Uh, but then if I scroll up one notch, you can see it's coming down here. So this seems to be the sweet spot for this effect. Now on the front end, unfortunately, the admin bar uh, does get in the way when you're going back up. But without this admin bar, uh, it will be visible 100%, as you can see. So there you have it guys, uh, this is an introduction to the Observer trigger. There are many callbacks and event listeners, so I do recommend to make a sandbox and have a play around. It's very fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun preparing for this video, so uh, yeah, the best way to learn is just to play around with it. So I hope you like this tutorial, and if you have any questions, once again, please do drop a comment below. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.